Hey, I am David for Big Bits, and in this video, we are going to take a look at a new feature from TradingView introducing, well, better options for using colors with some new functions in PineScript. So, first thing, of course, if you haven't already noticed, and you might have already, is that when you go over to the menu and you go to what's new, you might have already had like a badge notification up here, but you will see this article up here. It just came out a day or two ago. And it's saying your pine scripts will sparkle with bright new color. Well, bright colors now. We've added new series colors and gradients from the RGB palette. Okay. So these are not hexadecimal colors. These are RGB. And I'll explain to you a little bit in detail because they do that in the article itself. But let's go ahead and open that up. Oh, that's actually the reference manual. Here we go. I'm going to read some of this to you. But uh, for the most part, let's just go over some of the details. You can now use color better with charts, and you can get the value with color better. The color can be calculated, which is pretty nice. Um, basically, you can use custom values that you calculate if you wanted to, and they've actually built in a color calculation, which can be used for gradients, and I'll show you how to do that later on. But go ahead and start here says these are added from the RGB palette. There's a new function, color.rgb, which also has transparency, keep that in mind. And that allows you to set the color of something by passing in certain values, which means you can calculate the values elsewhere, pass them into this function to assign color to a variable, which wasn't always possible. And it makes, uh, it gives you the ability now to be a little bit more creative with the colors on your chart, which is always something very nice. Uh, making indicators and strategies a little bit more aesthetically pleasing has always been a design goal, I believe, of good creators on TradingView. Now, you can get rid of the definition of the entire color palette used in the script, and instead you calculate the color. And this is what I was just saying. Here is the actual code that they are using. They are using a color input, and you can see that color input is based on RGB 33, 150, 243 transparency. I'm pretty sure defaults to 255, which is the max, which means it's opaque. You can't see through it at all. It's not transparent at all. So there's two different functions here. One that sets the color for red, green, and blue by passing in those values. So Really, it's very simple. They've, they've calculated the transparency value here based on relative values of the candles. And let's scroll down here. You can see the transparency has changed on these different candles, kind of depending on the size and shape of the candles. I'm not going to get into the math here. Uh, you can do that whenever. But the next function that they call, which is setting the actual color value that they're going to be using for the bar color or the candle color, they are calling the fgrad transp function here, which sets the red, the green, and the blue. But you notice that there isn't a variable for the transparency. They define that here and pass that into their function that they're using to set all of them. So you can see it passes in the color object. It pulls out the red color using the color.r function inside of the color that you passed in. So they set the default RGB. This function will pull that out. The color R function pulls that out of the color object that you pass in. So now this value is just 33 by default. Then, of course, they do it for green with the dot G and then blue for the dot B function. And then you can create your color. And in this case, since this is a function, it's returning this last line here. When it creates this object color, it is returning the RGB based on whatever you pass in. So if you change your settings, it'll allow you to change that there. So now that we've got that, that's done. And then you call your bar color with your function result variable here, C color, and it changes from bar to bar. Pretty handy. Now, this is pretty basic stuff if you've worked with colors before in programming, but when you're using RGB, the values for red, red, green, blue, and transparent all range from 0 to 255, except for the transparency here. 
is zero to 100. And a lot of times you'll actually see RGBA, which is red, green, blue, alpha, and alpha typically is zero to 255. So I was a little thrown off here. It's actually zero to 100. They use a percentage-based system here on their transparency. Now, it tells you least intense, most intense. If you want a specific color, there are RGB palettes on the internet. Just Google RGB palette, find a color that you want, and it'll tell you the exact RGB values for it. Now, we've already went over these other functions here as well. Uh, that's if you need to get that specific value. We mentioned that here, and that's what the function they had was doing. Now. The next thing that we have is to calculate a color using their built-in function from gradient, which is actually pretty neat. They don't really give you a ton of information here on how this actually works, so we're gonna dive into that just a little bit. Uh, but you can see it's pretty powerful. You can see, let's zoom in. There is a gradient being formed on this particular line you can see that the color changes from time to time, and they actually have this in something already. I'll show you in a moment. They have some built-in indicators, momentum, which is what I'm going to show you, uh, tricks, price oscillator, detrend, price oscillator, chiking oscillator, volume oscillator, ease of movement, rate of change. Some of those built-in indicators already have this added to them, which is kind of nice that they release a new feature, and they have the examples out there ready for you. And they also give you some links on this article to some of the indicators and strategies perhaps that also have this already built in. You can see the gradient looks very nice with the relative price action here on that particular chart. Now let's go back to the reference manual. You can see color dot from gradient here. Um, there are a few parameters you have to put in. You have to put in the value. Now this is the value that you're detecting or calculating the gradient for. You have a bottom value and a top value. This allows you to set a range for this value to be in to calculate what the gradient value should be in there. And then you have a bottom color, which when your value is at the bottom or relatively close to the bottom, it should resemble the bottom color. And when the value is close to the top value, it should be the top color or similar to it, if it's not quite at the top, okay? So essentially what you have here is a range of values Within that range, if the value is within that range, it will calculate the color. Now, what I believe is happening is when it is below the bottom color, it just uses the bottom color. And when it's above the top value, it just uses the top color. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, and they actually give this to us in the example. I have the momentum indicator that's built in. You can see it uses a bit of gradient. Might be kind of hard to see until I zoom in here. There you go. It uses a bit of a gradient over time here. It kind of changes based on the different values. Going down, let's see, to the script here. Where do we have this? All right, so here is... And I, I can't see my screen too well. I've got so much stuff up on my desk right now. There you go. Here is the line that they're using. They are using the sine of the series times the multiplier to get their value that they're passing in. And then they want to calculate this based on the bottom value being the down value all the way up to 100. And then, of course, they have their down color and their up color. When it's between those two in the ranges, the down value and the 100, then it will calculate what it should be between there and you can see that it calculates and puts these out and that it actually works. So it's pretty cool uh, that this is all built in now, uh, a built in function that you can use to create a gradient. This is much easier than what we were doing in the past. And again, hopefully whenever I can get some time, we can come back and do this. I am teaching three more courses during the summer, so I don't think it's going to be during the summer. Sorry guys, but I'm a very busy person, unfortunately. Uh, right now, my schedule has been booked crazy, so we're not going to be able to get around to be doing a bunch of these examples on real projects, but we've done a lot and going to continue to do more as soon as the uh, schedule opens up, but you can see exactly how that works here. But that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you're following on uh, Twitter because I am posting some fairly important stuff from time to time regarding technical analysis. I don't really get to do technical analysis uh, on a lot of my videos anymore. 
is kind of unfortunate just from where I've been so busy, but uh, also some thoughts on kind of what's going on. I'm going to try to see if I can't make some shorter, shorter content um, and, and see how that works going forward. That way I can get some more updates out there. But for now, that's going to be it for the video. If you've watched this far, uh, hopefully you appreciate the content and you can leave a like on the video. And while you're down there, if you did like the video, go ahead and subscribe. You'll get other updates like this on TradingView when they have updates to Pine and also just general updates to their platform as well. But that's going to be it for this particular video. I appreciate it. Thank you and have a great day.